Assalamu alaikum. This is the second session in the books of prime entry. Remember, we ended the last session to say that we are going to talk about purchase and sales journal and sales return journal and purchase return journal. And we said that the session after we do the cash book and general journal. Here we start with the purchase journal. Purchase is defined as goods bought from suppliers for the sole purpose of selling them onto customers. That means that any, any item that the, the business buy for its own use, it's not considered purchase and accordingly it's not recorded in the purchase journal, but it's recorded in the general journal. We need to agree on this. This is the purchase journal only for the items intended to be sold to customers. And purchase journal is a diary where every transaction, every invoice or purchase is recorded on a daily basis. And the record should include invoice date, number, and final amount. It should also include the supplier name and the supplier account number in the trade payable in the purchase ledger. Remember, we said that trade payable in the purchase ledger is credited with all the purchase amount to record that the supplier is a creditor of the, of the business. This is a sample of the purchase journal. We start with the date description that will include the name of the supplier and its account number, the invoice number, and the amount. We have three transactions. We are going to share with you three transactions. First one happened on September 8th from ABC company of which its account is account number 123. This account is a trade payable account in the purchase ledger. Invoice number is 333 and the amount is 900. This is a serial of the supplier, so we don't have this serial, we don't follow it. Second transaction was on September 10th from XYZ company of which its account number is 3012. That's the trade payable account in the purchase ledger. And its invoice number is 601 and the purchase amount is $1,300. Third one happened on September 19th and it's from JKL company and its account is 121. It's in the trade payable account in the purchase ledger. And the purchase amount was 869 and the invoice number was 1010. These are the serial number of the supplier. It's different from one supplier to another. Total of the purchases for the month, that's September 30th, is $3,069. I'm sorry. This entry is transfer of purchase account. It's transfer of purchase to the purchase account in the ledger. So, we, at the end of the month, we transfer the total purchase to general, general ledger and we'll see where, where it will go. Then we talk about the purchase return and the credit note. You remember we do the credit note issued when we do returns. When we do returns, we, we issue a credit note and it's recorded in the purchase return journal. And entries should include credit note data number and the total amount. And it should include the supplier name number of the supplier in the trade payable account in the purchase ledger. Same information. The only difference is in, in, the, in the purchase we have the invoice number and date and in the uh, purchase return journal we have the credit note number and date. We have sample of two transactions. We start with date and description where we have the supplier name and account number and the credit note number and the amount. The first return is September 12th. September 12th is to XYZ. The, the date should be the same date or the fo following or the following the, the purchase date you, because you can do return before you purchase. So it's September 12th. If you remember, we purchased it from XYZ on September 9th. And the account number is the same, 3012. And this is the credit note number from the serial of the supplier, CR81. And CR81 and the amount is 100. So the purchase was reduced by $100. In September 21, that's later date for the purchase that we did from JFK 
and the account number for JLK is 121. That's a payable account in the purchase ledger. Its serial number is saying CR75. It is a JLK serial number. And the amount is 69. The total is 169 and is transferred to purchase return account in the journal ledger. And now let's look to the, 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 to the ledgers themselves. We start with the purchase ledger. We have the account for ABC, that's 123. This is the first supplier. We have purchase of 900. There is no return. If you look to this, let's, let's remember what, what it is. We bought from ABC 900. September 8th. So you will see this is September 8th, 900. And then we have XYZ, we purchased 1300. And JKL, we purchased 869. This is XYZ, and that's JKL. Purchase is 1300, credit 1300. JKL, credit of 869. And the purchase return is 100 from XYZ, that's debit, and 69 from JKL. That's the accounts, the trade payable accounts in the purchase ledger. Then we go to the general ledger where we do the posting of the total of purchases and total of purchase returns. Total of purchases is 3,669 and it's debit in the purchase account in the general ledger. Total of purchase returns is 169. It's credit in the purchase return account in the general ledger. The net purchases is the sum of the two. We, we deduct the 169 from the 3069. This is the cost of our goods. Now let's go to the sales journal. Sales journal is also called sales day book. Sales day book. And copies of the invoice on a daily basis are recorded on this journal. And the record should include information. Invoice number, date, final amount. Customer, now we are talking about customer name, not supply. Customer name, customer number in the trade receivables in the sales ledger. So we are using the sales ledger and it is divided to sub-accounts called trade receivables. Sample of the journal here is including three transactions as well, date, description, invoice number, and amount. September 5th, we sold to Ali, of which is a, his account is 333, and the invoice number, this is our CD, 211, and we sold it for $1,000. On September 7th, we sold to Hassan, account number 365. This is our serial number, but not necessarily that we sell to the people sequential. And the second, the following invoice, this has to be sequential. Unless we, de we delete it or cancel any invoice, the, the number of invoices for our sales journal has to be sequential. 212, and we sold goods for $900. September 12th, we sold to Khalid, of which is account 30. 112 and the following invoice number is 213 and the amount is 709. Total purchase, uh, total sales, I'm sorry, 2609. And this is transferred to the sales account in the general ledger on September 30, that's end of the month. So the transaction happened on daily basis. We have our uh, customer name, customer account number, invoice number, and the amount. At the end of the month, the total purchase, total sales are transferred to the sales account in the general ledger. Now, we will talk about the sales return. They might, customers might return sales for several reasons. First reason is wrong goods were delivered. They received the wrong goods. Goods were damaged or faulty. Third one is goods were of poor quality. For all of these reasons, there should be a credit note issued to reduce the invoice for them. Also, there might happen that by mistake, the, the, the business will overcharge the invoice to the customer. This will be treated also as sales retail. And the credit note should contain the information of data number of the note and the customer 
name and the customer account number in the trade receivable account in the sales ledger. So we do the sales ledger, we use the sales ledger with the sales, we use the purchase ledger with the purchase. Here we have a sample of three transactions. We have the date, description, credit note number, and amount. September 7, Ali, I'm sorry, there are only two transactions, two transactions over there. Ali had returned goods equal 100. And the serial number here, because it's the business serial number, it's sequential. So Ali had returned goods worth $100. And on September 15th, Khaled had returned goods worth 90. So the total is 190 to be transferred to the sales return account in the general ledger. This is September 30th. Now, let's see what happened in the general ledger, in, in the sales ledger journal. Sales, uh, I'm sorry. Let's look what happened on the sales ledger. Sales ledger, we start with Ali. Ali was the first customer. His account number is 333, and he bought, or we sold him goods of $1,000, and he returned $100 sales returns. Then, second customer was Hassan. Hassan's account number is 365, and he received goods of 900, he didn't return anything. The third customer was Khaled, who was sold goods of 790, and he returned goods worth $90. Sales account will be credited in the general ledger, will be credited of 2,690, that's the total sales during the month. And the sales return account will be debited of $190, that's the total sales return during the month. With this, we have finished the journals of sales, sales return, purchase, and purchase return. Next session will be about cash book. And we study several things on cash book. Thank you.